are live tonight. It's Tuesday night. I'm here by myself, evidently, because there's nobody else here. But we're going to talk about side imaging. And late summer patterns are going to put you on more fish. So if you own a side imaging unit, you're going to want to stay tuned because we've got some really cool stuff that we're going to share that will help put fish in your boat oh, in the summer. Well, hey, there's, there's, down, there's right? my wife. Where'd you come from, babe? Why are you looking for Did you just walk in from Port O'Connor? Yeah. You did? I did. Tell them trip yeah, and you choose you. All right. Well, guys. I'm to steal the show by himself. We have been without it. Mike and Noel for hey, Tommy, three or four break. weeks. And, um, hey, Maynard. They were supposed to be here an hour ago, and they still hadn't shown up yet, so we're trying to. Come on, y'all. Show it. us some likes. Y'all want the guys to get in? <laughs> there he is. Yay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Noel. Mike Thompson in the house, Noelle Bar. We got the group tonight. We We're so all here. We got the band back together. Yay. <laughs> yeah, the lead fiddle and and uh, the banjo back there was was had been gone for a while. So guys, we're glad you joined us. Uh, we're excited. We got a lot of cool stuff to share tonight. So yeah. with that said, Terry's going to go ahead and take over. She's going to just steal the She's show tonight. She's going to really tell us everything that's going on in the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, hit wrong button. It's okay, Kim. It's all good. Come on, guys. Y'all do hey, Y'all welcome. Y'all uh, hit us up. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Welcome, Michael and Terry, back to the north part of Texas instead of what we thought was out of state until We're we got down there. We're out of the country. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it seemed like it's a different part of the world when you get down there to Porto, that's for sure. But uh, had a great time, had a great trip. <laughs> that caught a lot of fish and stuff. But they're back up here to run trips with us again. Me and Noel's been kind of holding the fort down they have. but uh and, and trying to put y'all on the fish but uh and they got a pretty dang good job yeah, we've pretty been putting the smack down on I've seen. so uh yeah. anyway we got the whole crew back up here good to see y'all again on tuesday night like, like i said i think we're gonna be we'll be talking about the normal tawakany stuff this time That's instead right. of all about port o'connor we're going to be giving away uh same some of our swag again we're going to be giving away uh Right. What's in that cup? Yeah. He's always going to snack. Him. <laughs> what's in the cup? That's what yeah. I want to know. What's in the yeah, cup? He well, said it was coffee. What do you think's in this cup? <clears throat> Some of that. What's that called? We had the other day. It's that. called sweet tea. Yeah. <laughs> it's diamond, oh. red diamond. No, it's not Brookshire's. Brookshire's, Brookshire's brand tea. sweet tea. See, I'm. Yeah. With buckle. We're interrupting. I'm sorry. Mike's go ahead. got some well, good stuff he's saying here. No, I was just yeah. welcoming everybody back on a Tuesday night. You know, now that we're back on too. So yes. there's 31 good people good. watching this. Yeah. What's up, Jeff? Luke I, Seymour I, 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 says, "What's up?" We have to read him on this okay. thing. Hey, the looks like the thing's sliding down again. Mm, no, it looks good. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, all the corners are all there. Okay, you can, yeah. If you look on the okay. corners, you we can, look good. Yeah, y'all, y'all let us know how everything looks, how everything sounds, all that kind of stuff. Make sure everything's yeah, good to go. Yeah, we never know. Uh, how about um, somebody do a lake report? I, I have to say, I, I want to say something oh, before we get started. Go ahead. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was real. It was about these guys. Noel and Mike have smoked the fish the last oh. two weeks, and I have to. I throw it out there. These guys, man, flying solo on the lake, rocking and rolling. So big kudos to y'all for Thanks. smoking the fish down and having fun out there. Nice. We've been getting customer report after customer report after customer oh, report how yeah. much fun they're having on the boat with Mike and Noel. So just want to just say thank you guys for doing a job well done in a, in a time of the year when sometimes the fish can be a little harder to catch. So That's just I, an uh, attribute, attribute to how great Tawakani can be. That's right. <laughs> All right. I like well, we that. Well, so. I got to know one thing, though, because you guys haven't been on you haven't been on li uh, live with us since you guys left Port O'Connor. Just what did you guys think about the whole saltwater fishing and the whole Port O'Connor? Oh, it's definitely a, in a class by itself. That's yeah. for sure. You yeah. know, uh, just like Tawakini stands out amongst all these freshwater lakes around here, Port O'Connor, I mean, I have fished the Gulf waters all the way from the tip of Louisiana all the way Golly, almost to New Mexico anyway and stuff. And so uh, I fished a lot of that coastal region in through here, uh, all through Alabama and everywhere else. So, uh, But Port O'Connor is definitely in a class by itself. Uh, it's definitely a sleepy little fishing village. There's not uh, there's not even a Walmart or anything like that in town. 45 uh, minutes away. Yeah, 45 <laughs> minutes from anything yeah. close. 
except yeah, for the one convenience stop. store. Yeah, the Speedy Stop. That's about it. But you can yeah. buy everything there. Yeah, Everything's there. a good yeah. thing. So uh, everything. But anyway, it's the, like a mini bucky. The there. fishing is mm -hmm. absolutely off the chain down there too. So yeah, we really cool. appreciate y'all having us down there. Oh, that's I fine. think one of my favorite times of the trip was actually seeing Mike and Noel uh, breathe hard. Y'all oh, yeah. were so uh, winded. Of course, I was too. Sweating. Me Terry was too. But, dude, there was one time I tried to tell Mike there was a rod down in the back, and he looked at me, and he was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> so, get Noel to get it. I don't uh, want it. Uh, when, you're, when you're out there, and, of course, you know, you, you get a little bit winded. And, uh, of course, you know, it's one thing when you're riding out there, and you get a little bit of salt spray in your face and this and that, and kind of wakes you up. But then you get out there and get to sweating and all that's running right down in your eyes. And it starts trying burning. To, you're trying yeah. to wipe your brow as much as you are fish. And that's right. And then you got so Noel dancing with fish. Oh, right. uh, dude, you know, I, I fish hard the whole time I'm grabbing the holes from the boat and just... Yeah, you were... No, you, you experienced I, 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 the fullness. And I think my favorite part, here we are talking about Port O'Connor 2018, which is a done deal. But uh, I think our Terry and I's favorite part about the whole deal with the guys down with us was when Noel wanted to jump into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, we and swim that story up. with the sharks. Yeah. Wasn't that a great yeah. moment? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> it was. Yeah, we got we to get that posted up. The last time I was, I, <laughs> the, I was the, out in saltwater. The salt sounds water. that came out of this guy right <laughs> yeah. here. There was some looks and some <laughs> sounds. Let me hit him all. Let me hit him all. messing with me and grabbing my leg. <laughs> They didn't help we'll tell the story. Let's just say Jesus walked on water and then Noel walked <laughs> yeah. on water. Yeah. With a shriek. It didn't yeah. help much when we were when they jumped in where we were catching sharks after we were done. We and, had released the shark. Yeah, yes, a big and then a hammerhead yeah. had been circling the boat that day. And uh, when Noel jumped in, somebody screamed shark. And that, yeah. that, that didn't help. <laughs> yeah. Then help so, take a so, dog paddle. Michael jumps in, you know, Michael jumps in the water, then Mike Thompson goes right behind you, and then Terry waits, and I finally jumped in there, and then Terry goes, Shark! My feet like, Tick -tick -tick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're and then you got Michael messing with my feet, grabbing my feet. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That yeah. was a great time. It's, we, we had a really good time. Down yeah, yeah, that, was that was fun down there. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it, it was, it was definitely there. very exciting, because the last time I have ever been in the ocean, I was 16 years old. You know, we're out of California, San Diego area. Never did uh, pay a lot of attention to fishing. I was always, you know, playing with the birds, you know, dolphins, whatever. But this time, you know, as a grown man, I go out there, you know, to Port O'Connor with great captains, a great team partner right here, and we fished hard. And I learned the whole experience of saltwater. I'm yeah. booked. Yeah, and, yeah. He, and he just happened to catch the biggest kingfish that the star tournament had had weighed in in like, he said like 16 years. Yeah. And uh, would have won a $60,000 boat or a Polaris or whatever it was they said, but, but he, he didn't, he didn't star. register. So he's going to weigh this giant kingfish in and we got to lay it on the thing and the, and it says 5802. And that, anybody that's kingfish knows that you don't, 59. that's like a 17 pound yeah. black bass. I mean, you just don't ever see that. And he lays it down and the guy that's in charge of the whole deal, he looks at Noel, he doesn't look at me, he doesn't look at Mike. He looks straight at Noel and he says, "Here's the question: Are you entered in the tournament?" And Noel kind of goes, "Uh, I can't uh, be. Uh, Where do I enter?" And I go, "Where do I pay?" The answer is no. He goes, "Well, okay, there goes a sixty thousand dollar boat right down the drain." Yeah. <laughs> you know it's funny true. because I thought I had a shark yeah. when yeah. They, when y'all were fighting big old giant what well, 40 50 that, pounders yeah. yeah they had that multi-million dollar tournament going on oh down yeah. There yeah for the for the, for the, the, the lone star shootout yeah, yeah they had that big lone star shootout which is a multi-million dollar tournament going wow. on and they were doing the weigh-in the day before and then some of them were at the dock fueling up in these 10 million dollar yachts yeah. noel pops this fish out of our little 27 foot cat, yeah. <laughs> America, and he's holding it like this, trying to, you know, it takes two of us to get it out of the boat. And they all come off their boats looking at it like, oh yeah. my God. As, asking right. questions yeah. where, what yeah. bait, and how did. They I were, said, you see that bean bag right there? I was asleep the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> You've got questions? He, he's got answers right over there. Right. All right, oh, let's talk about Tawakami. All right, Sorry. back on Tawakami. Back on. Yeah. Let's do back on. We, All right. We need a lake before. What's happening on Tawakani? Well, you guys already know that it's fishing well. The water level has dropped another two feet, but I mean, it, 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 another two feet? Another two feet? Oh, oh no, two, two feet. feet. Two feet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Two feet. Which is, you know, now the stumps are more noticeable out there in the middle of the lake. You can actually see the stumps out there now. Really? Yeah, a lot Some of places you can't, though. So yeah, so. Make sure you know 
So it has dropped down, you know, two feet, but all the rims are still open. Everything's fishing great. As of yesterday afternoon, water temperature is at 79.8, I believe. So, I mean, that's what's happening. Yeah, it's still in the low 80s. I've is seen, it, I've seen it some clear? other. It's clear. It's clear. It's, it's yeah. pretty clear. Uh, hey, Sean. Some of those little rain spouts and stuff we've had have hit it, and it kind of cool. It keeps it, keeping it cool. I mean, that's it, the coolest I've ever seen it in the middle of August. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've been on this lake 30 years now, and I don't remember. It seems and, like and that, I don't remember a time you know, that you know I've ever seen it. That's going to be helpful for the stripers. It is. We've got a lot of big striper in the lake, and this August is killer on the stripers mm -hmm. when it gets hot especially so, especially when they start schooling and stuff well like the so. whatever little rain we had had i noticed it's all bent towards scrimble you know up in yeah, that area and stuff like that so hasn't hit the lake uh much so nothing has changed everything's clear sure. everything's visible everything's still fishing the same so get out there book your trip or go out there and be safe watch out for them stumps out there in the middle of the lake so all right, what we got? Yeah, good deal Let's um, give something away. All ramps are open, no, marinas are open, let's talk about, gas let's stations. Let's talk about the fishing. Let's get, talk to the striper and hybrid and white Mike's bass. Good. There you go. Well, like I said, talking about August being a good month for the stripers and stuff, they especially like to school up early in the morning and late in the evenings. Uh, during the middle of the day, they get in these wolf packs and they start surrounding some of the structure and stuff. And so the best way to, to, to go out there and just keep on your side image and keep looking for them uh, and keep on the move. Uh, but like I said, in the mornings, uh, for about the first hour, um, you need to be looking for those fish busting the surface and stuff. I haven't really noticed that many birds working the areas and stuff, simply because those usually move in and out pretty quick, or those schools do, and so the birds really don't have time to set up on them. Seems like the birds always work better when those fish are out in the middle of the lake uh, schooling, and those fish, or the birds are, are up high in the sky and then they can locate those uh, a little easier and they can zoom in and help you. So right now we're not really keying in on the birds or looking for the birds. This is sliding down a little bit now. Yeah, yes. but, uh, but anyway, the, the striper action is still on fire. Uh, we have had just a couple of tough days where it seemed like we had that little front move through a couple days ago and it, we had some big wind and it, and it made it a little tough to catch uh, those fish that one particular day. But other than that, we've been smoking them just well, about every day. Was that the day where we had winds from the north, the south, the west, the east? I mean, it was just <laughs> in well, every it was, direction. Yeah. It was it was a south wind, then it was a west wind, and and it was really kicking. And the areas that me and Noel have been catching them in, it made it kind of tough to fish those areas for one thing. But uh, but the other thing is, it, anytime you get a, a west front coming through on this lake, it has a tendency to, to slow those fish down. But uh, I, I promise you, they rebound within a matter of 24 hours and then, it's, then it slides out again. So. It's a rare occurrence that you go out there and don't really just light them up. What about the crappie? Cool. You had a crappie trip the other day. How's oh yeah, crappie? the crappie. Uh, the crappie have changed a little bit too. Uh, we were catching them on some of our brush piles in about 12 to 18 feet of water. Uh, a lot of the crappie right now, they're out deeper than that. Um, but they're still about that depth, but they're out on isolated timber or the bridge or something like that, but they're suspended. And they're in deeper water, they're probably more like closer to 30, even all the way to 40 feet, but those fish will suspend in about that 12 to 15 foot zone around those deeper structure areas. They're not up shallow anymore. I mean, by shallow, I mean like 15 foot and less. They've, they've definitely pulled out to the main lake and uh, are suspended around trees and the bridge and stuff like that. Sweet. They're still back. Hey, great real quick, work. guys, let me see those those lights. Yeah, go ahead and hit those thumbs right there, that bottom I mean, left. You guys? see the share? Yeah, hit that share button right now so we could share this live feed and get more viewers in here. Tell you guys the truth. Tell you guys what how the fishing is, what we're catching them on, and how we're catching them. I mean, I don't know if any. We go from uh, showing you know how to rig up you know drifting weight. Uh, uh -huh. The gloves, line color, I mean. I'm just curious, did anybody buy those orange gloves? Because we, we, we mentioned them last week, or was it the week before? No, I, think, I don't even know. Uh, but Blur. I'd be real interested to see if anybody went and bought some of those orange gloves, because yeah. they, they are they are fantastic. We're dropping yeah. again. Uh, we are yeah. dropping. Yep, we're getting so, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, Woo. this two walk team that you see right here to, to shares all the information. Everything, everything we have on the boat, right we now, actually share it with you guys. Kind of right there. Friction. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. Right there. Yeah. You're you're really blurry there, Mike. There now you're clear. All right, sorry guys. Let me turn it up. 
Hang on, right there. There you go, right there. Try that. See if that works. Does that look good, everybody? We'll just keep moving. Hey, there's a, let's, uh, let's give away. Look, Ryan Glower says carry. on order, so I guess he ordered some. Oh, so sweet. Way to go, Ryan. Let's, uh, let me just real quick, we'll do the guest the wait. Um, that was a white bass caught on Noel's boat yesterday, or yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yesterday, and that is sponsored by RSR Lures. And so our guest the wait, uh, what'd you catch that on anyway? Would y'all catch it on a slab? Yeah, on a slab. On a, a, the Little John. The Little John. RSR Lure, there That's you go. That's a pretty big white for this time of year. That was, a, that was a really nice white bass. But uh, the, the weight of that fish was 1.9, and Gavin Gallagher, guess, first guess was 1.9. So it, I, I noticed that these smaller fish are a lot harder for you guys to guess. So I think there was one person that guessed that weight, so it's kind of funny. So we're going to do a perch next week. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to a little bluegill. Do a little shad. <laughs> yeah, do but a anyway, shad. Or a little black bass. So, I may have to post a couple of them crappie that I'll So Gavin, about. just reach yeah. out to Philip Walker yeah. with RSR Lures. You can find him on Facebook. You can reach him on the on the, on the the internet on rsrlures.com. Um, but the best way is P-H-I-L-I-P Walker. And you can find him on Facebook. He's on our friends list. But um, reach out to him and let him know you and you guessed the weight correctly for that little white bass or that big white bass. And uh, he'll he'll get your information via Facebook. Yeah, the he'll white bass, a, a two pound white bass is pretty big. I mean, typically yeah. they don't get much bigger than about three pounds. That's right. Uh, That's so that, that, is a, that, is a, yeah. that is a big one. This time of year. So, I mean, but the good thing, what we need to do though, is get a cooler full of them and guess the weight on the cooler oh, full of them because you can literally catch coolers full of those fish That's right true. now. Right oh now, my gosh. that's right. That's if you want to go out, you have to do that. Yeah. Oh gosh. And there's there's sand bass all our, over the lake right now, yeah. and believe me, they love those little John's RSR lures. I mean, you drop that little John in there. It's and speaking in speaking of big numbers of white bass, guys, one of the things we were talking about in the beginning of this feed uh, was your side imaging and your late summer, you know, the late summer patterns that set up on all the area lakes, and I'm talking lakes down in South Texas right now lakes in Arkansas, Oklahoma, uh, because we've got people watching all the way as far away as from uh, Kentucky and stuff. But guys, if your lake is in the upper 80s, uh, or, you know, well, yeah, Travis, yeah. that Fox Club, they need to get on the books and book another blue catfish yeah. trip with, yeah. uh, with he, you. I think he's hoping he's going to win one. I think he yeah. is, yeah. His name's yeah. in the hat now. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, but guys, we're talking about how side imaging is going to give you the edge during the late summer. And here's the thing. This is one of the reasons why. Uh, yeah, that's getting a little closer. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, with that said, with not knowing who's doing that, you know. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, behind the scenes stuff. A little, little red here. Oh, uh, I lost my track of thought. We're talking about side <laughs> imaging. <laughs> track of Guys, here's the deal. On your lake, most of the active fish are from 8 to 15 foot of water in August and in September. You don't have a lot of fish. Mike talked about how the fish are out deep, but he what, what he's referring to, even even out deep, the crappie are still in that in that shallow part of the water column. And so, but there's a lot of fish up in 8 to 15 foot of water that your side imaging picks up real easy. Even if your side imaging is not super dialed in and you haven't spent the time or the money to try to get it dialed in, it's a, even if it's a Lorenz. Even if it's a Lorenz <laughs> or a Garmin yeah. or a Raymarine or what, whatever. Um, check this out. Go find a shoreline, get in about 12 to 14 foot of water, and just follow your contour on your Navionics uh, GPS uh, app and just, just drive. And I, I guarantee you, you get around these points, these ledges or whatnot, you're going to find big schools of, of sand bass, oh. white bass, probably even some hybrid striper in like, nine to like 13 foot and they're going to show up and we, we had some pictures i don't know if we still have them but um i may have some we uh we have some pictures to show you of what these huge what's up Sergio Posadas? of of stuff look like or fish look like we'll on side imaging in the comments later is that what we're gonna do yeah okay yeah we'll do that okay and uh so guys check this out set your side imaging out to about 100 feet okay i, I you know i get in guys boats all the time they have them set to like 60 or 70. Guys, set these things out to, to about 100 feet. Crank up your, your sensitivity to about 13 or 14 on a scale to 1 to 20. So just over half, you know, about, you know, not three quarters, but between half and three quarters. And uh, brighten it up a little bit and just start driving. And pay attention. You're going to see these giant schools of fish. Stop when you stop. Noel talked about trolling. Or did you talk no, about trolling? No, okay. Not He's going to talk about trolling. And this is the time of year when that's, gonna, that's a little more effective on catching these fish. 
So, and actually with that said, we talked about side energy and finding these fish in shallow water. Noel can tell you about kind of what's going on right now with the white bass because like Mike said while I go, guessing the weight on a whole cooler full, we're not kidding you. Two hours with us, I promise you, you're gonna have a cooler full of white yeah. bass right now. And we and, have openings, so. And with that being said, you know, two things I wanna mention out on that. So first of all, we are using the side image a lot and just like Captain here mentioned it, once you see that massive herd of sand bass or hybrids, whatever you see on, on that shallow water, you wanna stop. First, first of all, what I like to do is I like to stop and you know, just try to throw slabs at them and see if, if they're gonna cooperate you know, with the slabs. You know, most of the times they will. You could tear them up on that you know, RSR you know, lure slab on that little john. So you just definitely catch a lot of sand bass that way. But if for some reason, you know, they're not wanting you know, to hit the slab or stuff like that, you, you could also troll for them. You know, get out there and get uh, some lures. And uh, once you mark your fish, you know exactly where they're, they're at. I've seen some people actually throw like a little marker on there. What, what do you call those? Uh, well, uh, just a marker buoy. Yeah, just a marker buoy. You know, I, I seen if no one else is around the area, you got it all to yourself. You know, throw a marker buoy out there. And what you want to do is just throw up and down, just pass them. And I guarantee you, every time you're just going to catch one and you're going to catch a limit of sand bass right off the back. See, there's there's a lot of sand bass out there. out there think we're drinking Alcohol. moonshine or something. You, you need to have milk in that gallon. Not no teeth. But um yeah, I mean just go out there and troll. Find the speed that they want. You know, speeds are different. You know, they might want a slower presentation or they want maybe they want something a little bit faster. And you know, once you start catching, you know, doubles and triples, then you want to stick with that speed right there. But definitely start trolling those massive schools of sand best. Easy way to get limits. With that being said, bring your kiddos out here on the weekends. Easy way to catch sand bass, and I guarantee you they will have a lot of fun. That's right. That's right. Good job. And uh, Mark had a question right now. It came in. Uh, Mark's a blue cat fisherman, I, I assume, and he fishes shallow water for blues, and that's actually coming up. I saw Jerry uh, the other day. Jerry was out at night, uh, uh, had a live feed going. Actually, he had your first live feed. We got excited about it, and there was nothing going on. I think you messed up and hit a button or something. <laughs> and then your second live feed, he came back and he had a big fish, so I thought that was cool. Yeah. But uh, Mark's question, uh, and it's a great question because I used to really worry about line color, uh, especially when fishing shallow water and water that wasn't real turbid or whatever. The question was, is does line color affect catfish, uh, especially fish in shallow water? And I'm gonna give you a real simple answer, uh, Mark. The answer is no. In uh, our opinion. And yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like we've proven it. Uh, the line color has absolutely no significance whatsoever uh, to the catfish, but I'm going to tell you what it does have a significance to. It has a, a significance to you, the angler. Uh, if you're fishing with clear or green line and you're fishing in shallow water, a lot of your bites in shallow water, you see the line move before the rod tip goes down. And a lot of times these fish are cutting left or cutting right and you got 10 rods set out. High vis line helps you determine the direction that the fish is going. And if you're fishing in timber, sometimes getting on the rod real quick and reeling a certain direction or moving the rod or whatever, sometimes can, can keep you from getting broke off or cut off. So I would definitely uh, stick with your high vis orange or green uh, line when you're fishing for these catfish because it's going to help you put more fish in the boat. So we're talking mono, yeah. right? And we're talking about mono. And they make high vis braid well, too. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Hey, Jason. So I hope that answers your question. I don't think you have anything to worry about in line color at all. Yeah. So, very cool. Where All are we right. at? Where are um, we at? talked about the. Let's do the, the caption this. You're doing the caption this, babe. Okay. Uh, the well. Did that happen on your boat the other day? What? The bird's nest. The, the, the bird's <laughs> nest. <clears throat> yes. Like it the did. First did you do it? Uh, not me. I, hey, I, <laughs> just so y'all know, I got it undone and we continued mm -hmm. to fit. Yes, I did. You got that undone? I got you it got that undone? Yes, I did. Oh, you're so I, there, there, There's a little trick to it, and I explained it to you. Uh, yeah, you did. So here's what I like to do. Whenever we get like a bird nest like that, all you got to do is just, you know, put a little bit of put a hot sauce on it and a little bit of <laughs> guacamole on there. A margarita on there. And then uh, get you your butter knife or anything. Just cut the line off. That's how you get it undone. No, a little tri a real cool trick to that yeah. is what I love to do is... Yeah. Um, I put my thumb on it and put a little bit of pressure. You want to tie up your drag and just turn it, just uh, maybe half a turn or maybe one full turn, and then put your turn the spool. Yeah, the handle. Oh, the handle. Okay. So you turn the handle, then you press the button back in there and start pulling on it, yeah. so that knot where it was clinched up at, it will uh -huh. become loose, and you just start pulling it off. It comes really? right off. So I was able to get it off. Well, I'll tell you what, if you could get that one out, then you're the man. Because I normally take those, and when my wife is watching like ER or some of the shows with all the doctors and stuff that she watches 
Uh, I sit there and pull out back lashes, and uh, <laughs> that's what I do for fun. So but, it, uh, it's on the boat, ready to go. Yeah. So that's course. cool. And we had a picture of that, and you guys had all kinds of cool, cool. Uh, oh my pictures. god, those are hilarious. They had some great captions. And yeah. here's the deal: if you're going to throw a bait caster, eventually, that's going to happen. I mean, I've I've seen it happen even <laughs> when I do it. So. Uh, professionally, oh, my buddy professionally, my buddy they, they assured me that 110 percent sure that they could use those, but they couldn't use mine. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. So we had a lot of great, a great yeah. uh, captions. And by the way, the caption this contest is a cool contest because yes. the winner of this contest gets their name put into a hat. And at the end of this year, in December, That's we're going to draw out of that hat, and that lucky winner is going to win a full-blown, full-day trophy blue catfish. And the winner uh, this week, which is Mr. Larry Janelle. My friend. I don't know that Larry, even My if friend. he won this, would go get in our boat and go trophy blue catfish. I know, fishing. right? He so wouldn't. you could probably give that hey, away to somebody. Hey, he could somebody. take us crappie fishing. So, but Larry, Larry, Larry. Uh, he, he's, uh, he did the right he did the right thing. He gave the perfect, uh, the perfect caption. caption to this, and he said, Told you I was a Zebco 33 kind of guy, so that uh, any because it's funny because anytime funny. from a guy's perspective that we get someone that you know, hey man, can you throw a bait caster? Oh yeah, 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 man, I go way back with bait casters. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool, here you go, bro. First guy boom, boom, blows up. You're like, God, I should have gave that guy a Zebco, you know, a <laughs> Zebco 33, you know, or at least a spinner rod. So that that really hit home uh, with with what we did. Okay. So congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Nate. Larry. Yeah, Way to go. Larry. Good job. That was great. Um, Nick Gator, for somebody that shared and loved our life. That's you, Noel. All right. So, first of all, a bunch of people share the live feeds and they share our pictures and our videos. So, I'm very thankful for that. Thank you so much yes. for sharing the love. We Continue to do so. We're very appreciated. Really Thank you so much. Uh, the winner is going to be Jerry Persons. Thank you so much for sharing our live feeds. Your negators here. So what you want to do is just put in your address on Messenger on Michael Cherry Little John, and we'll make sure we get it mailed out to you ASAP. Yeah, Noel, so really good I really deal. appreciate the guys. You know he's gonna have his own feed. Before I know he's gonna, be gonna have his own show. <laughs> it's gonna be in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I think that's great. I hey, but hey, great. thanks for the love. We really do appreciate. Hey, it. Speaking of negators, just really quick, guys, um, ladies. We have women's um, Tawak swag, our Tawakani, women's Tawakani shirts. Not these cut, but they're cut for women. There's even a V-neck now on our on our website. So um, it's at www.tawakaneeguideservice.com. Click on fishing apparel and order you some Tawak swag, man. The girls the girls' shirts are nice. I haven't done it yet because we've been gone since we've, they've yeah. gotten them in, but I'm going to order some. Yeah, we've got. Do so we got some for the kiddos? Uh, yeah, there's yeah. yeah, there's kids in there too. Kids, kids and, and, and got, yeah, we might so. as well tell people what we've got. We've got the Under Armour style long sleeve performance yeah. fishing shirts. We've got cotton shirts. Uh -huh. uh, we do have the uh, the gray camo gun gray hats that you and see this right is how here. They look when they're two years old. Yeah, they still look cool. Performance shorts and yeah. short sleeves. And you short can get sleeves. the performance shirts in the short sleeve. Definitely. And we have hoodies. Women's. And uh, women's. And we yeah. got women's in these, and we have hoodies. So, yeah, yeah. So, so and <coughs> that's all provided by branding. Effortless Branding, yeah. uh, which is a great. If you've got a need, a corporate need, you work for a company, and you guys want to do a bunch of cool uh, swag for your uh, your customers, great prices, uh, really quick Excellent turnaround, pricing. good customer service. Check out EffortlessBranding.com. Yeah. Um, tell them, tell them we sent you. So tell them we sent you. Tell, tell them we sent you. Sure. And uh, guys, we fish this in June, July, and August, and oh, yeah. you do not get hot in them. Yeah. I mean, they they stay yeah. fresh. And, and, they, and they clean up pretty well. And if you get yeah. hot, just turn on that Oxy, Yamaha Oxy engine, Oxy turn around, and get some AC out there. Uh, Oxy yeah, clean spray. <laughs> like, his shirts were covered in, like, uh, tuna blood. Blood. Yeah, it was really, really bad. I wish really, it was really tuna. <laughs> it, wish it, was tuna. tuna. It, was it was king, king blood. But regardless, it was, <laughs> hey, Cindy. Um, anyway, so yes, it was covered, and so I got some OxyClean that my sister told me about and Pretty sprayed cool. it on there, yep. gone. And I, some of those shirts were stained from like three or four years ago. So get you some meds from Fabuloso. <laughs> I needed a tip for tonight. OxyClean right. will get yeah, that works. fish blood out of your clothes. Promise you. You know these guys are ready to go watch their favorite shows tonight. Yeah. So yeah. it's Tuesday night. So Mike's getting ready to. Uh, Jason, you said something about waiting on the hoodies. Like I said, just go to the website there. You can order the hoodies right now. You don't have to wait on them. Um, yeah, they should be there now. Yeah. Oh, I need to Unless order some we hoodies. owe, do we owe Jason some hoodies? Jason, Jason Fletcher. Fletcher. Jason Fletcher. He said he's waiting. Send me a message. Oh no no, hoodies. Jason's waiting on. He's he's talking about something else. He's talking oh. about 
the hoodies. Oh, the, the, hoodies. the these with yeah, the, the other things. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, hey, we're, we're right around the corner from that, bro. Okay. Harry, thanks for joining so. us. What's up? But anyway, we have anything else? Y'all have any questions? Any last minute questions? Anything like that? Yeah, we are, we're fishing on Tawakani. We have openings. Right. We even have Saturday Labor Day. There's a boat that canceled. We have one opening. You better yep. 903 441 3937. Don't we have a special we have one? Guy. We have a special. Oh, yeah, we have a special. Going? Tell them about the special. I mean, we Why don't you let Mike tell them? Yeah. You've been hogging it all night. Get back. Come on, Mike. Tell them about the special. Tell them about the special. Uh, our summertime special, hey, folks. It's a uh, he talks a lot. It's, it's pretty simple. It's it's going to be a half day trip. It's either going to be for the sand bass, what's up, Sonny, or for the catfish. It's not a combined trip or anything like that. But it's for one to four people instead of one to three people on the pricing and stuff. And it's only three hundred bucks for that half day trip. That's so the deal. You can come out. It's a good deal. It's a it's a four hour trip. Uh, like I said, one to four people instead of normally our pricing is one to three people, so you get a free extra person there. Plus, it's only three hundred bucks. So, uh, but like I said, that's Plus either, that's either with for sand the sand bass. bass or for the catfish. So, they're loaded with catfish if y'all want to come out and fill a cooler up, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, In fact, I've got I've got to run one of those trips uh, day after tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah. they're a lot of fun <coughs> to catch these sand bass. So, you, yeah, yeah, the, the right. fish are buying right now, guys. I mean. You know, yeah, August, September can be a little slow, but it's not slow right now. And trust me, and you know especially what? for those two. Yeah. You got, you know, you got cooler weather coming in. It ain't gonna be as hot. Definitely, guys, you want to have a fish fry? Come and get you some sand bass. Yeah, we start yeah. early. Because I mean, out. now, now you get a whole bunch of fish. Mm. Put your fryer out there and start doing, you know, fish tacos. You know, <laughs> <laughs> black and black and fish. fish tacos. So now it ain't fish. that hot out there. Right. Now you can actually fry we can outside. Do fried so. fish. We can do. Fish, get your cooler pull of yeah. sand bass. Time to talk and thank our sponsors. That's My right. Part and, the the wine, <laughs> and the wine the showdown, guess what? Hey, you we should grab the mic in your head. Yeah, get real close to the mic. It's great. Tonight's episode was brought to you by these fine sponsors, Pure Fishing. Can you see my teeth when I do that? <laughs> Does that come off? Minn Kota and Humminbird. Yeah, Costa hard. Del Mar Sunglasses. RSR Lures. Yamaha Outboards. American Angler Filet Knives, Be Ready Rod Holders, McKinney Custom Rods, Tough Skin Motor Covers, Blackbeard Marine, and Effortless Branding. Woo! All right, guys. Y'all have a great week. We will see <laughs> you guys so much for watching. next week. Bye-bye.